Uh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another episode of Inside the Network, where we share exclusive conversation from inside of BrandManNetwork.com, where we're talking to artists, managers, and even sometimes producers, where we get specific to their particular situation, because we have actually a time and space and place to really get into that. You'll see the way we get to talk with artists and go back and forth before we answer questions versus general advice. But this clip right here is a convo with Russ B., Dude is dope, been in the music game for a minute, been at record labels, all that good stuff, but I want you to see his advice when it comes to building a team and not just building a team, the other aspects to look at it to get the resources you need pulled together, and I'll see you at the end. Let's get to it. It's the network. I'm at the point now where I'm... Uh... I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to post or what I can do um, organically to grow, like, my account. Because I know that, um, you know, like, influencer marketing and um, I know a different, you know, a couple different, uh, like, Instagram, Facebook ad strategies or just paid advertisement in general that I can do, you know, to grow. But, like, other than like getting in front of other people's audiences. So like collaborating with other artists, producers, um, even having like other graphic artists, like do my art. Um, just trying to think about other ways I can uh, like grow organically. While I get the budget. Right, right. Stuff, you know. Well, definitely um, grow your team. Locally, you know, um, thing that um, can be done with money can essentially be done with manpower. So definitely build out your team. You know what I'm saying? Um, build out a roster um, of artists, producers. Uh, marketing guys, PR guys, all type of guys, and just build out your team and just try to make it as big as possible. Um, and then that's another way. If, if you're, if you have the, the skill to sell them on your vision, you know that's another way you could cut costs. Because you know if you putting up, um, you know two hundred dollars a month, that comes out to what? Uh, you know that comes out to. Twenty four hundred a year, right? Yeah. But now, if you got um, two people putting that up, then you got forty eight hundred a year. But now, if you got ten people putting that up, you get what I'm saying. So it's like, right. um, you know, that's that's another way that you know a lot of these artists that you see make it. Um, it's not just them, you know. Sometimes they got three people behind them putting up thirty thousand. Sometimes they got ten people behind them putting up ten thousand. Sometimes they got one person behind them putting up a hundred thousand. Um, you know, it all varies, but yeah, man. So I, I would say anything that um anything you could do with money, you could definitely do with manpower. Gotcha. Um. So how would you even um, really go about – so, like, the closest thing I ever had to, like, a team, I guess, um, was, like, I, like, I think, like, when I graduated in high school, um, I had, like, some friends. Uh, they all – I think a few of us wanted to rap, and then, like, over time, like, they saw us doing it, and they all, you know, they got into it and wanted to rap, too. Um, right. And it didn't. It just didn't work out because everybody wanted to rap. Nobody wanted to do anything. Else. Um, but like outside of that, um, I just haven't been successful in trying to find or you know trying to build a team. And I know that uh, I think I've seen some stuff on Sean's uh, channel where uh, you know he's talking about like uh, you know like first reach out to your own network, you know your family, friends, um, or just you know people that you know or people that support you. Um, right. but then like shit what about honestly, you know after that honestly I would I would say um 
my my motto is those people don't really count. My my motto is actually to ignore those people, cause um, your family and your friends that's your family and your friends, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like most times, what are the odds that um they're meant to be on your professional journey with you? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I always tell people. Don't be mad at your friends because they ain't doing that. They're your friends, man. They ain't, they, ain't, they ain't become your friend for that. They became your friend because y'all was playing basketball or doing whatever y'all was doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> People be mad. Like, oh, like, my friends don't support. I'm like, man, they're your friends. Like, they ain't, you know, like, they, they, should, they should show up to your events. But if they don't. They don't stream your music. That should tell you more about your music than it does your, about your friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yep. um, so yeah, man. I would say, um, like even even how I said like radio, radio for example, right? Yeah. Cost cost about seventy grand in New York to get thorough radio play, right? But if I had 150 interns right now, and I say, yo, all of y'all comment this song on all of these, this whole list of DJs, Instagram, mention them on Twitter, spam them, call the station, all of y'all, all 150 of y'all, right now, and don't stop, do it for the whole week. You think we're going to get through? You damn right. <laughs> You damn right. So it's like, um, yeah, there's ways to cut corners. There's ways to cut that cost. You know what I'm saying? That cost, the cost of things is if you're not willing to do the free way. But there's always a free way. You know? So like, say, Say you're in my situation, or you're like a you're you know dealing with an artist in this situation where he's uh in between cities right now. So like if you remember, I'm in Iowa right now, ain't shit in Iowa right now. Um, and you're trying to build a team. How would you? And you don't have like anybody like pending or. Like you do literally be literally be starting from like scratch as far as like team building goes. How would you even like initiate that whole process? Where would you start? How old are you? Twenty six. The reason I asked is because um college would be the first thing I would say. We kinda yeah. missed, we kinda missed that window. Um I would say move to a New York, move to an Atlanta, move to a LA. Um, get you three videos that's popping. Three videos, put Google ads in them, get them in six figure views, build your gram to like 10, 15K. Do those things on your own. Then, then seek help. And then join music networking groups and just start talking to people piece by piece and onboarding people piece by piece and pretty much like selling them you have to sell them on it but before you even verbally try and sell them on it you want to already have some groundwork laid in so it's not just a bunch of talking on your end you want to actually show them like look i've already done x y and z on my own you know you're the missing piece to bring it home but this ain't something that I need you to start. I'm already started. I'm already going to go. It's going to move with or without you, truth be told. But I would love for you to be a part of this. This is how you could be valuable to what I'm doing. And this is how what I'm doing could be valuable to you. It's the network. Oh, all right. That was that clip. And I just want to add a little bit to it. What Russ B said was extremely important because I think a lot of artists miss the fact that you don't have to play this game exactly how people say you got to play it. 
It sounds simple, no rules to be specific. However, you can get creative, right? I don't know why people do not, but in the same way you can get creative in your, your artwork, right? It's the same way a lot of artists fail to be creative in their ads. But in this particular situation, right, you can be creative in how you build your team. Your team does not have to look like a normal team, especially at the beginning. So check this out. It might be ideal for me to have one graphic designer to do my albums, um, like the artwork from that, to do my logos, to do my um, animations and things like that. Maybe even my video editing as well. I would love that to be in one person who could do all those things, dope or if not above average. But at the same time, when I'm just starting off, I might need a guy to just do my album covers because he's dope at album covers, but he might be trash at animations. All right, so I got this animation guy, and this is my team, right? And, and, and they're both on my team until it gets to a point that one starts to learn, I can do both, or I just end up with them both half time, um, full time. In the same way, he talked about, hey, you can get $100,000 many ways. I can get 30K from somebody, 20K from somebody, and 50K from another person. I can get 10K from 10 people. I can get 20, 20, 40, 40. Like, there's so many different ways I can break that down in. All right, and actually 20, 20, 40, 40 is 120K, which is even better. But the point is, you can also get it from one person and get 100K. Crowdfunding, there's so many different ways to slice it. Make sure that you look at your resources as such and understand that it doesn't have to be in this whole pool of, I need one person that does this, one person that does that, another person that does this. Like, it's, it's great. It's ideal, but it's not always realistic, especially at the beginning. You might have to have somebody contracted through Upwork, Fiverr, or something like that that does all your Instagram posts in the beginning, and then you only pay this other person that does graphics for some other stuff, right? And here's another thing, last but not least, and I'll leave it at that. that there's priorities that you should have when it comes to the quality control. Right. When it comes to your brand specifically or certain types of business specifically, there's a pecking order. Right. So let's say when I'm signing a deal, I probably want a lawyer lawyer. You know what I mean? But when I go further down and it's not so heavy, it's not a record deal. Maybe I'm just checking out a distribution platform um, and then I might not want to do that. Some people I know don't even read a deal at all, but you know, I got a guy, you can check him out, George, I'll put a link to the description below it and he helps read through contracts, right? Uh, but, or you might have a whole nother level that's so low that you don't care at all and you can take that risk. That's a pecking order. But the purpose of looking at that pecking order is I can pay a lot of money for this person. I need to pay a lot of money for this person, this person. I'll pay a little money, it's important, but not so important, and maybe that person could be contracted, right? Not on my team. Or this other person, look, I might try to get them done to do pro bono. The, uh, maybe my graphics or my covers, extremely important to me, so now I need to make sure that this person is a higher quality, I might have to pay them more money, or I might have to try to get this person on my team, but then only pay them like whatever the specific deal is, but my IG post maybe, depending on your brand, my IG post might not be that relevant. So I can pay that off on Fiverr. As long as it's getting done, I'm good, all right? Versus places that really, really matter. Understand the pecking order, and this goes in all categories, from your video quality and which videos you're working on, your music video versus an IG video versus an IG you know, TV or IG story video or a Facebook video, whatever, all right? TikTok video. Same thing for financial situations, signing deals, graphics, your marketing, you know, management. There's so many aspects to management because you can get a booking manager and you might not even like Russ, right? Russ got a booking manager and he got a, well, a booking agent, right? And all the other stuff he already had, he basically didn't need a manager at, in, in that situation, right? Because he had so many of the tasks split up towards other things that might be considered management duties. He covered a lot of them just by himself and his own capabilities. So with that being said, he has an 
an unorthodox, ah, an unorthodox fashioned team, but we see that he's winning in the way that he's winning. A lot of times taking this general advice on how your team should be built or how your resources should be looked, I mean, how it should look, that actually leads to a lack of success because you're trying to put yourself in a box that you likely can't even afford, likely doesn't even make sense for where you are at the time, and oftentimes it's built off of an old system of rules that is actually bound and set up for you to fail and only possibly to win when you have a certain situation behind you and oftentimes that situation again is set up for you to set uh to fail based on old institutions advice industry etc so that's a little advice little insight and i love how russ made sure you focus on a different way to get to the resources that you have in mind this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because I signed myself. If you like this video, go ahead and the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. If you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.